Hello everyone and welcome back to another book review. First of all, if you're new here, I post new book reviews almost every single day. So if you're looking for some reading inspiration, you just want to be nosy and see what I'm reading, you just like following other people's book reviews, then feel free to stick around. Today's book I'm going to be reviewing is The Book of Longings by Sue Monk Kidd. And unfortunately, the library wanted their copy of the book back, so I wound up returning the book yesterday before I was able to film this review today, so I do not have anything to show you. But I did also alternate between the physical book and the audiobook, so I did use both formats, so maybe it's fitting that I don't have the physical book to show you because I didn't read the entire physical book. The audiobook was beautifully voiced, or be beautifully read, so I really enjoyed that and I highly recommend that option if you are going to read or listen to this book. If you do audiobooks, I did like the audiobook version. So this book was the selection for my book club. So I am in a book club and the way we select books is we go around and each month someone has the complete autonomy to pick the book that they are going to select for us to read. So someone selected this book and I didn't really know what it was. I just agreed. I had read one other book by Sue Monk Kidd and that was The Secret Life of Bees, but I read that like back in high school. So it had been quite a number of years, but I remember really enjoying that book so I didn't think anything of it. I went to the library, checked out this book, The Book of Longings, and I brought it home and I flipped it over and I read the inside cover and it said it was following the story of Anna who is the wife of Jesus as in the um, figure in Christianity. And I was like, oh boy. I said oh boy because I thought this was going to fall more into the Christian fiction category, which there's no shame if you like Christian fiction, if that's your cup of tea definitely no problem with it, but it's not usually a genre that I enjoy. So I was worried that the book had been selected from this genre that I didn't really enjoy. And therefore I kind of put off reading it for quite a while. I should have had a little bit more faith because the person who selected the book this month this book for the book club usually has really good suggestions, but I was a little bit nervous. And I want to say right now, this book, as far as I can tell, does not really fit into the category of Christian fiction. It's just utilizing Jesus, a character from Christianity, an individual in the Christian religion. But it doesn't really, in my opinion, fall into the category of Christian fiction, at least in the way that I normally think about it. So that fear of I'm reading a book that's in a genre that I don't normally enjoy uh, was definitely something that, first of all, everyone in my book club, when we came to discuss it, mentioned that they thought they were getting into a category they don't usually enjoy, but it wound up being a very good book and not really in the category I thought it was. And I think that a lot of people going in to read this book might have the same misconception that I did or may want, may take a second look at it or maybe not really want to pick it up because of that. But I think this book really doesn't focus on the character of Jesus, the character um, who is Anna's husband, who is the girl or the woman in this book. The focus really is on women and women's voices. And I feel like the focus is on this society that Anna lives in. So Anna is a young girl. She's actually in the beginning of the book betrothed to be married to another individual, but the individual that she's betrothed to be married to dies, much to Anna's more or less delight. She was not interested in this marriage, but she had really no say in it. Her parents don't really treat her very respectfully. They, they don't really take her, con her views into consideration. And that's due to the time that she lives in. The religion that she follows and the culture that she's in doesn't really respect women's ability to choose a partner. It's kind of all set up without their consent or knowledge. There's a nominal requirement to get the daughter's consent, but it's not, as we can see from this book, it's not really followed if the family thinks it is a better match. Her betrothed died, but unfortunately that makes her a wed widow, even though she never actually married this individual. The betrothal was enough to kind of bring these two individuals together. And now at the age of 15, Anna finds herself um, a widow. And in this culture, a widow is not a high status or just an accidental person. Um, it's not someone who just unfortunately had a spouse die. It is someone who is not considered really worthwhile pursuing. So her family is kind of annoyed by this situation, not because of the outrage of the situation, but because they now have a daughter who they have to kind of offload to someone and they're trying to figure out the best way to do this. Due to a whole series of events, she winds up being married to Jesus and this kind of kicks off her life. The focus of this book though isn't really entirely even on the marriage. It's more about the women in Anna's life and Anna herself, dealing with things like pregnancy, like miscarriages, like the role that she's expected to play in society. She has a strong interest in learning how to read and write and study, and that's something that's not really viewed as 
acceptable for women to pursue. It's about women who are put in difficult situations, difficult marriages that they don't have an ability to leave very easily, even when they become incredibly abusive. We have the voice of her aunt, Yalfa, who is a woman who has been in a very difficult situation. And the whole story, the whole book is following Anna through her entire life as she tries to make a corner of the world for her and influence the fate of her life when there's all these outside influences that are trying to force her life to go one way. The the whole book overall really made me reflect and think about how lucky I am to be born in the time that I am. I, uh, I was not born in the 21st century. I was born in the 1990s, but I live in the 21st century and I would be able to leave. There would be no legal issue with me needing to leave, for example, some of the things experienced in the book, like an abusive relationship. And there's a lot more access to medical care and the rights of my ability to choose who I'm going to get married to and the ability just to go to school to learn to read and to write um, and the ability to bring people who attack me to justice. There's all these things that um, when you read this book I think a modern reader really gets the sense of how powerless some of these women were in the face of all of these things in their culture but also how they used what little power they did have to kind of shape their life the best they could and make the best of the situation you also get in my opinion like that strength of sisterhood so like women supporting other women in their lives they kind of all understand or most of the women that Anna's interacting with understand how powerless and how little influence they have in their own life but a lot of the women are trying their best to make a little section in their own life that's just for them that they can do the best they can and I feel like that connection between other women is really prominent throughout the story. As I mentioned this is just following Anna through her entire life that's kind of the theme of the story. Really the uh, Jesus as a character does not really show up very frequently in the book actually despite that kind of being a premise of the book the focus is really more on the women going through their lives and what they experience and that's something I feel like if I remember back to The Secret Life of Bees that book was also kind of about women and this uh, situation situations and difficulties that they found themselves in. So I feel like the the author, Sumon Kid, kind of has a feel for that situation or she's really good at writing or she enjoys writing about these sort of things. Um, although The Secret Life of Bees did not take place in um, like Roman Empire times. So that's a little bit of a difference, but I feel like the subject matter and the themes that she write about, writes about tend to be the same. I liked the writing style. It's not the writing style that I would read every single book in. It's kind of like syrupy, flowery, that's the best way I can describe it. Lots of descriptions, which I enjoyed listening to on the audiobook, but that sort of description, over description and flowery language would be very obnoxious if I read that in every single book I read. However, when I read a book that's written in that style occasionally, I do find that I enjoy it. It's kind of like a sweet treat. Once in a while it's very enjoyable, but you wouldn't want to eat sweet stuff day after day after day because you would get sick of it. So I do kind of like the writing style. It's not something I want to read every single day, but I do enjoy it when I do get a book that's written in that style. And I like the way that the audiobook narrator read it. Overall, this was a four star read. I had a great time and I think Really, when I review books, expectation comes a lot into my review because the expectations you have going into a book shape the way that you review a book. And I had a lot of expectations that I wasn't going to enjoy this book. And I really enjoyed reading about the women in the book and how they shaped their destiny the best they could given the limited resources that they had. And so my surprise was very pleasant when I read this book and I it was much better than I thought, which I think lends itself to a much higher rating because I was, again, pleasantly surprised as I went through this book. I think if you're looking for a historical fiction that you would like to read, pick up next, then maybe try The Book of Longings by Sue Monk Kidd. I enjoyed it and I think you may enjoy it if anything I've said sounds interesting. If you have any thoughts, comments, if you read this book, if you have any thoughts, please put it in the comments below. I love to read it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.